the first week, my first uh, my first match back against Hart's number one man at the time, the Dream Machine. Uh, it, it had to, had to be the most important match that that uh, well would ever be in my career up to that point. I know there were a lot of doubts in people's minds, uh, and there were, I must admit, some apprehensions in my own mind. Did the King still have it? Could he come back as good as ever? Uh, I knew this uh, Dream Machine was going to be a tough opponent, and, and he turned out to be just that. Uh, he, you know, he, he talks a good fight, and he fights a good fight once he's in the ring. The guy was uh, as tough and as strong as any opponent I've been in there with, and uh, I, I must admit, you know, after just a few minutes of the match, I, I was really concerned. I had some concerns about my leg. I was wondering if it would, if it would hold up, if the stamina would still be there. But after, uh, uh, say, 10, 12 minutes into the match, I realized that uh, uh, I started getting that good feeling. I realized it was still there, and I, I was going to make it. And, and I, I was uh, able to do away with this dream machine, the guy that Hart, uh, Jimmy Hart, had, had claimed was the greatest wrestler. He claimed that he was going to be the man that put me back out of action for another 11 months, or permanently at least. And uh, I was able to come out victorious over this guy. Now, Jimmy Hart, is, uh, you know, the one reason I really wanted this match was because it, it, it gave me a shot at Jimmy Hart. And, and that, was, that was one of the most important things to me at the time. But also, uh, I knew that I had something to prove. I knew that I had to prove to the fans that had supported me over the years here that, uh, that the King was truly back. Well, the man came after you with everything I think a wrestler could possibly come after another athlete with. He tried everything to put you under. And for the way you've come back, I have heard other wrestlers talk, especially your friends say, that you have come back with more, they've seen you with more intestinal fortitude, with more drive and more stamina than ever before. Yet this man, the, the fans are seeing the action of this match right now. This man just came out after you with, with everything except the kitchen sink? Well, without a doubt, Jimmy Hart had the man pumped up sky high. He had told him that he was going to be the man to put me back out. I'm sure he had a price on my head. He was going to pay the man a lot of money. And he and he had built his ego up over a period of weeks, and, and it was like, a, it was, you know, he was chomping at the bit, so to speak, by the time the bell rang. And he did, uh, he did give me one of the hardest battles that I've ever had, but I was able to come out victorious. And, and like you said, though, as soon as I stepped out of the ring, there was Hart right there with another challenge. He brought in, uh, you know, he brought in another one of his top wrestlers, the man who had taken my place while uh, while I was out with the injury. He showed up with Paul Ellering. Uh, Paul Ellering, uh, I'm aware, or I have been made aware of the fact that he has been on a not only a nationwide tour, but a three-nation tour where he was undefeated and undefeated in many sections of this country, in Mexico, across the water, in Japan. He came into town to to do one thing, and I'm sure, without a doubt, you know who is behind this. He was in to destroy you. He had made some comments to that nature. Yet he came in that ring. He came in that ring breathing fire. But again, you came to the challenge. Well, you know, uh, it was the two days after my leg was broken. There, uh, uh, wasn't even really warm in the hospital bed. I turned on the TV and. I, I knew I hadn't had a call from Jimmy Hart, and, and uh, I just figured, well, something's wrong. I know he'll get in touch with me. I turn on the TV, and here is Jimmy Hart, and what is he doing? He's out there on TV. He's got my crown, and he's putting it on the head of Paul Ellering, telling everybody that uh, Lawler's like an old race horse. When he bro he's broken his leg, you might as well shoot him because he's finished. And now I've got the new king of wrestling, Paul Ellering, here. Well, you know, uh, Paul Ellering dominated wrestling around this area for six or seven months. But I understand that every time he stepped in the ring, the fans were telling him, Paul Ellering, wait till the king gets back. And that's what I was thinking about. I thought about him for a long, long time. So I was ready for this match. I wanted it more than Ellering wanted it because I wanted to prove to him and prove to the fans that, uh, you know, I wanted to show them exactly who the real king was. And I think when the match was over, Paul Ellering uh, kind of tucked his tail and he may have had second thoughts about listening to Jimmy Hart and having him come back in because like he said he was on an impressive win streak he had gone undefeated since he left this area and uh, now that record is marred and I don't know if he's going to be too happy about coming back in when Jimmy Hart calls for him again. Well I tell you the man came in he, you've got to admit that Paul Ellering has to be one of the strongest wrestlers as for pure physical strength 
of anyone. But yet again, you came to the ring ready for action, and you did the man in. You walked away with that ring, from that ring rather, with your head very high and with a victory under your belt. Well, it's a mental thing, Mike, as much as a, a physical. You know, he is, uh, he was tremendously built athlete. He held a world deadlift record. and uh, But then, like I said, uh, I, I had something to prove, and, I, and I've proven it to heart, and I've proven it to the fans, and uh, I came out on top of Ellering, and, and just as soon as Ellering was gone, Hart came up with Your him. challenge was not over, and none other than Austin Idol. Here's a man that is world-renowned, a man that is respected in some circles of wrestling, as part of probably one of the most hated men in some circles of wrestling. He came to the ring again with fire in his eyes with the idea to put Jerry Lawler out of wrestling once and for all. Well, you know, I have to admit, Michael, when I heard that uh, that Hart had hooked up with Austin Idol, uh, it did cause me some concern because, give the devil his due, Austin Idol is the man who has hospitalized me in the past probably more than any other wrestler. He uh, broke my hand. He caused me internal bleeding that I was hospitalized for two weeks with. Uh, he tried to blind me one time by throwing some ink or dye into my eyes and uh, caused me a hospitalization there. And I knew that this man, uh, you know, there's there's a saying in, in sports or sometimes when somebody has somebody's number. Well, that's what Hart thought. He, he he and Idol, I'm sure, both thought that Idol was the man that had my number. He had, he had done it in the past and he thought he could do it again. So I was concerned when, I, when he called for Idol. But uh, like I said, it's just, it was just a process of sitting down, getting myself mentally prepared for the match. Uh, when a guy does things like Austin Idol has done to me in the past, it's something that you never forget. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a scar that you carry from now on. And, uh, you know, I've, I've thought about Austin Idol a lot in the past, sometimes on a cold day when the hand is kind of stiff. You know, uh, that's the first thing that goes through my mind. So I thought, well, here's an opportunity to to not only show Hart that he's not going to be able to keep bringing in these guys, that it's not going to do him any good, but also to get some revenge on a man who's caused me a lot of pain and agony in the past. And, and uh, the fan support was terrific, and I was able to come out on top once again. And, and I'm, just, I'm just trying to prove to Hart that I'm going to get to him one way or the other. I don't care who he brings in. I don't care who I have to go through. I'll answer any challenge. But I'm going to, my number one, my main objective at the end of the road, after I go through all of his opponents, I'm going to get to heart and I want him out of the wrestling business. Well, Jerry, you have certainly come back strong, stronger than ever, I might add, and continued success and continued good luck in that ring. But for goodness sakes, and, and I'm sure the fans would reiterate this point, please be careful. The King, Jerry Lawler match uh, all three of them as a matter of fact they had their most impressive wins over uh, three very formidable opponents and maybe the most formidable joe ledoux coming up. up yes we got more action we'll be back to it in just a moment okay. it's coming up eddie gilbert coco Ware against the bounty hunters that'll be coming up in just a few minutes Coming in right now, the man we were just talking about, the king. you got to be feeling awfully good after looking at the highlights of three very, very tough guys. I feel so good, it's hard to put it into words. I feel really good today. i got some great things to tell the people. First of all, as you know, last week I was able to come out victorious and win Jimmy Hart's gold record. Yes, you did. And that is all that I've heard all week, you know, from, from a lot of the fans that said, you're not going to really throw that record in the river. It's not a gold record. You know, I got to thinking, I could, melt, I could have that thing melted down, make some nice jewelry or something, a ring or something. So I checked up in Nashville with some friends of mine, and I found out that the records are only gold-plated. And, I mean, you know, they would have some value, but the, really the main value is to Jimmy Hart. And I, I, think, I think that I want to see the look on his face as he sees that gold record of his that he's so proud of sink slowly to the bottom of that river down there. So what I'm going to do today... Today, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, I'm gonna, not going to block any traffic or anything. I'm going to stop and I'm going to walk right up on that bridge. So if anybody wants to come down there and see this little event, 4 o'clock today, the old bridge down there, downtown, the old bridge, and I'm going to walk right up on the middle of that and I'm going to take that precious gold record of yours, Jimmy Hart, 
and we're going to drop it right to the bottom of that river. Yeah, he'll be out there in a scuba gear trying to go yeah, get it. Yeah, I hope he is. I hope that wimp does that. Tied anchor, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you something. He better get himself some scuba gear or get himself uh, another guitar or something because after this week, Hart is going to have to find himself a new profession. Now, I know I've told you, I've come out here and I've told the people that my main objective since returning, from, returning to action was to get Jimmy Hart out of wrestling. You know that, Lance. Yes, absolutely. As a matter and of fact, finally, you said that during his recuperation. That is right. Well, finally, it has finally come down to the opportunity to do just that. Because I don't know if you've told the people about the no, stipulations on the upcoming match. Well, let me tell them. Because this is the greatest okay. thing that has ever been since sliced bread. Joe LaDuke. Jimmy Hart has gone out and gotten Joe LaDuke. And I'm sure that they've talked and they have both convinced each other that Joe LaDuke is the man that can do the job. He's the man that can put me back out of wrestling, re-break my leg or whatever. Well, let me tell you something. The stipulation on this upcoming match is if, not if, but when I beat Joe LaDuke, 